already five theaters modeled on a railroad era diorama. It's interesting to reflect on how the town could support that many theaters in the early 1900s. Those like me who spent the 1950s in Rehoboth fondly remember when there were three motion pictures in town, the Blue Hen, the Avenue, and the Center, and in the 1970s, the Beechwood. As vibrant as the city is today, however, we have not one motion picture theater. Let's reimagine for a moment Rehoboth during the railroad era. Photographs from the era confirm to us that Rehoboth was as vibrant during the railroad era as it is today. Consider that there were two regularly scheduled passenger trains arriving in town within a block of the beach every day. And multiple times during the week, there were special excursion trains sometimes with seven or eight train cars full of folks. The town was growing rapidly. Wealthy folks from Wilmington, Baltimore, and Washington, D.C., and even nearby Lewis, Laurel, and Harrington were rapidly building large cottages on the boardwalk and along the treeline avenues about the city. During the summer, mothers and their families resided here with the fathers coming by train to join them on Friday evening. Two pastimes were as important during the railroad era as they are today. Beach going and walking the boardwalk. The boardwalk was busy day and night with women dressed in long dresses, parasols, and brimmed bonnets, men in jackets, ties, and boater hats. Other pastimes included bowling, dancing, card playing, magic shows, boxing, street performers, roller skating and ice skating, and theaters, both for live shows and for moving pictures. Silent movie picture films arrived on the train. If the train was late, the film was late. So let's take a short diorama walk around the end of Rehoboth Avenue, starting on the boardwalk at the Casino Hotel, which became the Bellhaven in 1912. It was the height of Rehoboth's railroad era. The 1910 Sanborn insurance map clearly indicated the theater that we find here between the Casino Hotel and its bathhouse. This is the southeast corner of the Rehoboth and Surf Avenues. Note the moving picture sign above the one-story theater building. There are no pictures of this particular structure, so the model of the theater was based on the insurance company plot plan. Interestingly, by the 1922 Sanborn map, the theater builder was building was gone, perhaps removed as the property was remodeled to the Bellhaven in 1912, or maybe the theater building was flooded and destroyed by the storm of 1914. But back to 1910, as you walked by the Casino Hotel on Surf Avenue, which was to the inside of the boardwalk, and you looked to the right, you would see the entrance to Horn's Pavilion Theater. If you've seen my video on Horn's Pavilion, you know that it included a menagerie of business activities. As the sign signifies, one of those was the theater. Horn's added this theater to the pavilion about 1905. It's probably in the upstairs that you can see in the image. The theater lasted for about nine years. If you've seen the theater, the earlier videos, you already know that the whole Horns Pavilion structure was destroyed in the 1914 storm. It was never rebuilt. Continuing our walk across the front of Horns Pavilion, we get to the north side of Rehoboth Avenue and start our walk 
down the avenue. First, we pass the Baltimore YWCA building, which is at the location currently occupied by Dolly's. The structure is the most recent addition to the diorama. The pasture in 1910 was behind that building and it serviced the cottage of R.T. Waters, who was the guy who gave the property to the Baltimore Y in 1905. We pass the Royal Roller Rink and arrive at the Royal Vaudeville Theater. That's theater number three if you're counting. Here is an actual picture of the theater. To be precise, this photo is from about 1915, having been built at this location after a fire had destroyed the, forefront, the storefronts to the west of the Royal Roller Rink in 1912. As you can see, this was a motion picture theater dedicated to vaudeville. So I thought you might enjoy seeing a clip of Fatty Arbuckle, whose films appeared in Rehoboth during the period. He was one of the most popular silent stars of the 1910s and one of the highest paid actors in Hollywood. Vaudeville was not necessarily appreciated by Rehoboth's religious community. On July 12, 1899, Commodore Schock, one of the city's commissioners, reported that permits had not been issued for vaudeville theaters and that such performances were objectionable. And this was well after the camp meetings were no longer held in the town. Back on the sidewalk, we proceed down the avenue past the Royal Roller Rink and a series of storefronts that housed Horn's offices and pool hall, S.R. Barnum's popcorn and candy store, and Ralph Wingate printers. Here at the west end of those storefronts, we arrive at another pair of theaters. The one on the left here is the Harry S. Newman Moving Picture Theater. Harry Newman was from Middletown, Delaware, and owned a cottage in Rehoboth. He had just invested in that theater. Here is the original picture from 1911. It formed the basis on which the diorama model was constructed. We're lucky to have the picture. The theater does not show on the 1910 Sanborn insurance map, so one must assume that it was built in 1911. On the night of August 17, 1912, that's one year later, Mr. Newman's theater burned down along with the casino theater pictured here to its right and the rest of the storefronts we just walked by. The Royal Roller Rink itself survived. Let's focus on the Casino Theater. A Pennsylvania newspaper's recounting of the fire describes the structure destroyed by the fire to be the Casino Opera House. Do you believe Rehoboth was cultured enough to support an opera house? I leave you to your own conclusions on this one. In this image, we have a group of folks standing in front of the casino theater. I can't identify them, but it looks like two mothers standing in front of three children. Good chance they are relatives of the Horns or the Tappans, both large and prominent local families in 1910 Rehoboth. Should anyone who is watching be able to identify those folks, I would love to hear from you. Charles Horn rebuilt the Casino Theater and renamed it the Blue Hen. Here I've juxtaposed a picture of the theater that burned down in 1912, that's the left image, with a 1916 photo of the Blue Hen that replaced it. 
It took me quite a while to establish why pictures of what I thought was the same building did not match. The casino theater, it turns out, had been replaced by a very similar looking structure, as you can see here. Last month, I heard from Till Horn Purnell that her grandfather, Charles Horn, wanted to name the rebuilt theater the Royal because her grandmother was enchanted with the royal family of England. But Till's father, William Horn, who spent time in a medical unit of the British Expeditionary Force in France during World War I, insisted that it commemorate Delaware's unit during the war, the Fighting Blue Hens. This incredible picture is said to have been taken at the grand opening of the Blue Hen Theater. It is hard to believe that that many people assembled in Rehoboth in 1915. Certainly, they could not have all fit inside that theater. Here is an early picture of the inside of a Rehoboth Theater, probably the Blue Hen. Sadly, even into the 1950s, the audience was segregated. The colored section was in the balcony with a curtain separating colored from white. The Blue Hen Theater survived for quite some time. It is remembered by many of us folks that were in Rehoboth during the early 1950s. Here's a picture of the theater in 1952. I saw Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho there as a young tyke and was scared out of my wits. You may wonder what happened to the Blue Hen Theater. Care to hazard a guess? You got it. Burned down in 1966. Here's a picture of its remains after that fire. It gets replaced by another theater, the Beechwood. Here is a fun artist rendition of 1970s Rehoboth Avenue that includes the Beechwood. The movie being advertised is a classic, To Sir With Love. I'm not sure when that location was transitioned, but today, that structure is Carlton's clothing store. Stop by Carlton's for a new pair of pants. While you're there, see if you can find the now covered but framed out opening from which the projector would have beamed the movie. And in the back, walk up the few steps to the women's section. You will be on the theater's stage. But let's get back to the railroad era. Here's a picture of Till Horn in front of the Blue Hen Theater in about 1924. Till is now living in Virginia. She celebrated her 99th birthday on September 1st this year, 2020. I have had the luxury of getting to know her through her daughter, Alice. It was Till's grandfather, Charles Solomon Horn, who built that theater in Rehoboth in 1915. I'd like you to notice the poster that is pictured over Till's right shoulder. The silent movie being shown at the Blue Hen Theater, released in 1922, is Tess of the Storm Country, featuring Mary Pickford. That movie is actually quite famous for launching Mary Pickford's career as a movie actress. Pickford would ultimately achieve worldwide acclaim, being received even in European cities to mobbing crowds, the way the Beatles were received 50 years later in the U.S. Here is how Till Horn is depicted on the diorama. I hope you'll forgive me for mistiming her appearance. 
the diorama is meant to depict 1910 Rehoboth Avenue, not 1924. But it is still the railroad era, and I could not pass up the opportunity to include the scene on the display. Notice the poster just behind Till's right shoulder on the diorama. It, too, is for Tess of the Storm Country. Pretty cool, right? And when you get an opportunity to see the diorama in person, look for this scene. The 1922 version of Tess of the Storm Country silent movie is available. Here's a short clip from that movie meant to have you experience what it was like to see the movie in the Blue Hen Theater in Rehoboth. Don't expect to hear any audio. You might find it fun to watch that movie through. It is on YouTube. Google it. It's two hours long, but Cindy and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Florence Sullen played piano during the silent movies, often having to play for the second running of the film while her friends went home to play bridge before the city electricity was cut off for the night. Let's finish off this video with another clip from Tess of Storm Country. See if you can pick up the storyline by listening and watching what you might have experienced in the Blue Hen Theater during the railroad era. <laughs> 